I have spent nearly the entire last decade of my life immersed into tech with projects, internships, multiple computer science degrees, and now a full-time software engineering job at a Silicon Valley company. In this video, I want to show you guys how I would learn front-end web development if I could start over today. I'll show you the easiest ways to learn HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React.js with free resources, projects for you to practice with, and how to get even more advanced by using AI. And as a cherry on top, I'll interview a big tech Salesforce software engineer to share his thoughts as well. So just sit back, relax, like, and subscribe, and let's get started right away. So first let's define web development broken down by HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And for a point of reference, let's take the subscribe button you see under this video. The HTML is the bare bone code that is written to create the button and the word subscribe on that button. The CSS is all about the style. How does the button actually look? What color is it? How big is it? JavaScript is, if you click on the button, what actually happens in that it'll trigger some network calls to register you as a subscriber to this channel and increase my subscriber count by one. So the HTML is like a skeletal structure. JavaScript is like the muscles and actions. CSS is the cool looking swag. So now let's dive into HTML, the bare bones. I learned HTML when I was 12 years old back in sixth grade. I created this cooking website that displayed many different dishes, ingredients, and recipes. It was the ugly website ever because I implemented literally just the HTML so there was no nice looking colors or anything like that. It was just text of the words of the recipes that I copied over from a different website. To actually learn HTML, I encourage you to check out W3Schools so you can get hands-on direct experience. As you learn things like H1, H2, H3, line breaks, and list comprehensions, don't focus too hard on trying to become a master at HTML. In fact, I don't think anyone actually masters HTML, but with enough time and practice, you slowly pick it up. Think of it like this, everyone learns the alphabet, but you don't actually consider yourself a master. It's just you have a tons of practice, so it becomes second nature. And as you continue forward learning CSS and JavaScript, you get better at HTML because these concepts compound upon each other. Next up, we got CSS, the styling. I learned this many, many years after HTML when I was 18 years old, freshman year of college. I joined this club called Bits of Good in which they built websites for nonprofits. I already knew HTML at a high level, obviously from before, but CSS was foreign to me. And the funny thing is, to this day, after years of experience, I would still consider CSS to be foreign to me. No one likes CSS. Even senior engineers struggle with it. There are just so many rules and conditions, it's nearly impossible to master. And honestly, I think of it like the periodic table. Unless you've memorized like the 200-ish elements, every time you work on a chemistry problem, you look at the table. Same way, every time I work on a CSS issue, I look at Stack Overflow. To learn CSS, you might wanna actually try W3Schools once again, but truly the only way I got better at it was by doing many, many projects. Coding up some HTML, opening up inspect element, altering the style component, and actually using that code. It's all about hands-on experience, and an even easier way to actually practice this is by using codepen.io. This is a free coding sandbox in which it shows you the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript side by side by side, so you can practice coding right then and there in real time. CodePen also has projects you can fork, kind of like GitHub cloning, so you can get started right away, just make sure not to plagiarize. Now let's talk about JavaScript, and I specifically want to focus on React.js, which is a super popular front-end framework. And I was actually forced to learn this when I was 19 years old at my second college internship. I was tasked to create this dashboard in React JavaScript, and I had absolutely no experience whatsoever in the language. But I did know Java and Python, so I wasn't a total bum, like I could read code. And the way that I learned this is I had my company's code base on one screen and the application that was running on another screen. I put a bunch of different breakpoints in the source tab of the inspect element, and I would just walk through the workflows of the system. I would log in, click a button, type certain things, and each interaction, I could literally visualize the code operating as I was going through. I learned important React JavaScript concepts like state management, use state, use effect, functional versus class components. I also learned how to properly style my code, how to make indents, how to name variables to meet company standards. If you want to learn JavaScript, I strongly recommend you check out Cody.tech. Cody is a platform 
that offers bite-sized lessons for many different coding languages. In this case, we can take the basics of JavaScript. It has many different modules. And within each module, it gives you lesson, quiz, and projects so you learn it and get hands-on experience. Plus, if you're ever stuck on any parts of the project, it has an AI assistant to help you out and walk you through it as if you have a tutor right there. The best part is it's absolutely free to use. However, if you do want the premium features like unlimited AI queries, use this code right here on the screen for 20% off at checkout. Now I wanna offer you guys two project ideas so you can practice one beginner level, one intermediate. First, the beginner, implement a BMI calculator. BMI my body mass index is a health metric which tells people how healthy they are based on their height and their weight. The super simple task in which you ask a user to input their height and weight, perform an internal calculation, and then spew out a result. Just make sure your girlfriend doesn't test out your application. In this case, you start out with your HTML, create text values on the screen, and an input field for the users to put their height and weight. Then add some CSS into the mix by aligning the fields up and maybe changing up the font and color scheme. Then put in JavaScript code such that on change of the input fields, the new values are stored and a new BMI value is calculated and rendered for the users to see. You can even add unit tests to your JavaScript functions if you're feeling nice with it. But for an intermediate project, create a Pomodoro project manager. A Pomodoro is a project timer tool to track that a person works for 25 minutes, then takes a break for five minutes. This helps you stay productive and you can have multiple Pomodoro timers during a work working session and you could have multiple sessions within a Pomodoro project. So you can see it's getting a little more complicated compared to the previous one. So not only do you need to write HTML code to display a timer on the screen with the stop and start button and respective CSS to make it look nice, but now the JavaScript code needs to be designed in such a way that it can communicate to the backend or the server and ultimately databases so it can actually store the sessions and projects accordingly. You probably wanna tag team this project with someone who knows backend and databases relatively well. Another really cool project idea that you can do is make your own personal website. It's completely free, and on top of that, it allows you to experiment with software that you're not familiar with. People like to do this to either experiment with industry standard popular frameworks like Bootstrap, or they'll try experimenting with something that's not industry standard and relatively new, like Next.js. Personal websites are cool because they allow you to go into greater detail about different projects that you've done and highlight things on your resume that you might not be able to do in one page. Personal websites are great because you can take projects you've done in the past, add them to your website, so it's kind of like a compounding effect. You get the project of the website itself, plus the other ones that you can just tack on. So now if you've mastered the basics of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and are comfortable with creating these semi-complex projects, now let's speed up your development by using artificial intelligence, GitHub Copilot. This is an extension you can attach onto VS Code that'll write code out for you based on the comments that you state. For example, if I comment, function to add X and Y, and then give the function header, it'll actually code out the function for me. And at scale with bigger projects, this can actually save you many hours of work. I actually think this is a better AI tool than ChatGPT for developers because it's integrated into VS Code as an extension, not just some third-party application that you put your company code on and have tons of security risks. Only use this AI tool if you need to, if you're on the job and you need to speed run your development. This tool will not help you learn and you just end up cheating yourself if you're a brand new beginner. Well, that's about all I have in this video. I really hope that it was beneficial and if you did, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. If you guys like this video, you might be interested in this video right here about what software engineers actually do.